You're listening to a podcast from the Finnish Football Show. Hello, you've joined the Finnish Football Show. We're back for another post-international roundup, uh, this time after the Nations League match against Romania. I'm Rich and I'm joined by Keke. Hi, Keke. Hey. And Mark Hayton. Hello, Mark. Hello. Hey. Uh, so this is our third of four Nations League roundups. Um, the the result from this Saturday's game was unfortunately Romania won Finland nil. But uh, Mark, why don't you start talking about the game and uh, where it all went wrong? Uh, well, I mean, it, it went wrong pretty early. I mean, we we had a we had a shocking opening to the game. I think uh, it was only what was it ten minutes or so when when O'Shaughnessy hobbled off. So uh, pretty early. It was it looked like a pretty innocuous challenge uh, when it came through to him. Um, but it looks like in the in the time since that he's broken his leg, which is uh, which is pretty pretty terrible. But not long after after O'Shaughnessy hobbled off, um, Yeri Urunen uh, was a judge to have uh, pushed a pushed a striker in the back, which looked like a really harsh sort of penalty award. But I suppose in the cold light of day, he was behind the fella, didn't really get anywhere near the ball, and did throw his weight in a little bit. So it was one of those that um, you didn't like to see given but it was it was a bit of a clumsy mistake yes Jorunen, who i think did really well saved it but but um even after saving the pen we didn't seem to take the warning we didn't seem to wake up um what uh, romania were quite good at was sitting back hitting us on the break bullying us in the box and um where it really went wrong it's hard to tell if if nikolai alho was would have made the header even if he was standing up because he's not really the the biggest of players, but he anyway took a dive at the back post for uh, for that Banshu fella to uh, to head home. In the what was that? That was only about twenty minutes. Uh, Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Yeah. There you go. Mm. End of the first half hour. So for that one, you know, Romania broke on us pretty quickly. Pushkas carried the ball out pretty far. Didn't really get closed down. He had a lot of time and space. Lobbed up across to the back post to an unmarked player. And then a um, lovely headed goal, but it was quite poor, I think, for all of that. Yeah, Keke, what about you? What were your thoughts? I mean, um, yeah, echo what Mark said, really. But I mean, um, before even those incidents, the the early incidents with uh, yeah, poor old O'Shaughnessy limping off. I, mean, I think it was on fifteen minutes. But but even before that, Romania came out of the traps at hundred mile an hour. And mm-hmm. it seemed to it seemed to take us by surprise. I mean, um, obviously we we chatted a couple of days ago about the Montenegro game and and how much time our our centre backs and our back line had on the ball to either choose to carry the ball forward or or to you know pass it across the back and sort of build. But the you know and and when we spoke to Robert Evenoff, he was he was saying that um, Montenegro's press was weird. Quote, but. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't think I don't think Romania's press was was weird at all. They were they were straight down our throats. You know, the the game was was played that first first section of the game was played at a frantic pace, and it seems to sort of catch us unawares a little bit. I mean, um, as Mark said, you know, Jesse Jordanen's pulled off a, a, a save from the penalty. We was all a bit we was all a bit upset when the penalty was awarded. But yeah, I think as Mark says, you know, with the in the cold light of day and uh, without the uh, blue tinted spectacles and um, and the rule book in your hand, I suppose it is a it is a penalty kick. And but yeah, yes, it saved it. And um, and yeah, we, we we didn't really, as you say, we didn't really take the warning. They they just kept on coming. But um, any on, on the turnovers when we sort of had any any sort of possession, Romania were really quick to get back into their defensive shape. And I think Mark even commented on the WhatsApp like it looked like they had sort of seven across the back line whenever we were trying to go forward. Mm. And I, I think the, the weird thing about that start to the game is that Romania got beat by Montenegro and, and Bosnia both. And I think they were maybe a bit unlucky in both of those games. I, I, don't, think, I don't think they were that, that bad. But it was predictable that at home they would sort of come out of the traps. This is their first home game after getting promoted from League C. They've taken two beatings and probably felt a bit harshly done by because they conceded it late in both of those games. Um, so, it, you know, it's a bit of a... It shouldn't be... It shouldn't have been a surprise that they came out of the traps. I do think... I mean, I do think losing Daniel, you know, he's one of the more composed players on the ball. And he's also got a long pass in his locker 
that can get us out of trouble. And one of the things we did struggle to do was was build up from the back. But we should have seen them coming. Yeah, I mean, the strange thing is, is that as we talked about for the for the penalty that was given away by Uren, um, a lot of Romania's attacks came down that side of the pitch, um, which would be where O'Shaughnessy tends to tends to be on the left of the three, and uh, Uren just seemed to be. I mean, again, we've talked about tired players and that. I mean, he didn't play in the in the second game against Montenegro, but um, yeah, just they looked particularly vulnerable down that side. And um, I mean, even again, you know, Alho got booked after seven minutes of the game. So again, they, they left him alone. You'd think they'd have targeted him, but going down the left seemed to, or Finland's left seemed to, to give quite a lot of opportunities. In the, in the interviews after the game, Yeri looked, I mean, he was beside himself. He was distraught and he, he was really, fo- he, he was talking about the penalty that they conceded and he was really giving himself a hard time. Like it was a stupid decision. He'd got the wrong side. He was rash. He knew he'd done that before. He mentioned the sending off yeah. in the Wales game and you go, well, I think one of the things about Yeri is he can be a little bit like that, which is that if he gets in his own head about a mistake, you, you th- I think he might sort of doubt himself. And some of his passing, actually, which is usually pretty reliable, wasn't exactly up to scratch. So I, th- I think it might have been a little bit there. I think the other element is when O'Shaughnessy is replaced, I like Kid Jensen. I like uh, Richard Jensen. Looks like he could be a good player for the future, but he's a bit slow. He's a bit slower, sorry, than, than O'Shaughnessy. So, yeah, I mean... Um... We, we, we praised Richard Jensen the other week when he um, we said he we said we thought he he looked like he'd been there for you know 100 games but um yeah I don't know if it was the shock of coming on so early for for the poor injured O'Shaughnessy but but yeah I think I think Richard sort of was plunged in a bit of the deep and there maybe not been quite ready physically or, or mentally just to come into the match so early and um, and he, yeah it, it, it sort of it sort of it looked that way to be honest. One of the things that was picked up on the halftime analysis by Ule was the the play of Tamil Pork and Yol Poli and Palo, who playing together, but they looked almost joined at the hip. They showed a couple of passages where one or the other should have been in one position and, and blocking the press and stopping the Finland, uh, the Romania defenders pushing forward, but they were within a couple of yards of each other and kind of getting in each other's way and not really doing the job. And, and as we saw going into the second half. I mean, Poe and Pala had two clear guilt-head chances and a couple of half chances too. Um, Puki looked tired and they, they just seemed to be kind of... There, there were a lot of half chances on the edge of the box. Uh, Kamara had one. I think Robin Lodd had a couple of touches, but he was getting dispossessed quite quickly as well. You know, again, we're talking about players who are playing third or four games. You know, Shaughnessy, I'm sure his club are delighted but he's now gone back to them for pre-season with a broken tibia. So, uh, yeah, it's um, I say with with one game left to go, we've some some fresh legs are required. Yeah, we did look, we did look all of that. We were we were leggy, I think, th- throughout the pitch. And I think, I mean, the heart. I mean, Yolis misses. I don't know. Sometimes it's just not your day, and it doesn't go in. So, you, I mean, you'd usually put your house on them to hit them. But a couple of the, of the longer distance shots from Lod and from, there was one also from Schuller late on, Kamara pulled the ball back. He was maybe 16 yards out. And, it, and that's the kind of thing you do in training. You know, you try to sort of loop it, swerve it towards the back stick, you know, and you think, well, why don't you just, I mean, you, you, you had a lot of time and space. Why don't you just leather it? Why don't you just put your foot through it and hit it into the crowd? But, but uh, yeah, we had a lot of that tired decision making tired runs tired we didn't really offer them we didn't we didn't give those seven <laughs> Romanians that were backed up in a line much to think about because we were pretty straightforward and Keke after the game you suggested that uh, Schuller was named uh, the hooky of the match obviously Poi and Palo somehow was given the award but um, I mean you were particularly impressed with his performance I was I mean um, you know we it's it's not nice to come away with a defeat, and as we've said, we look we looked a bit tired, and and maybe that we didn't expect Romania to uh, to come out that quickly, whether we should have or not. But I don't think it was all doom and gloom. You know, I thought Rade had a brilliant game in the middle. I really thought, you know, he had the captaincy for the match, and I thought he he led the team. And I thought, you know, he was he was he was picking up the ball, driving forward. He was he was you know looking to break up the Romanian play. I mean, the Romanians were it was really a game of you know. 
defend and then try and catch us on the break with that that guy Puskas who was who was quite speedy. But I, honestly, I, I think I think Rad had a great game, and we also had there was one or two there was one or two um, passages of play where we saw that one touch football that we were that we were all also pleased about the other day. And um, yeah, I think there was. There was one little bit, and it, it wasn't really deep into the game. It was in this sort of the opening exchanges where um, where we saw, yeah, there was like five or six one touches, and we started to play the ball around them, and it and it looked pretty good. And as we said, you know, Yole missing some of them chances. It's uh, sometimes it's it's unfathomable, but the fact that we creating those chances is something to take away from that defeat. You know, like um, we we've managed to create. We didn't give up. And so they, they just need to take that away and and, and, and continue. I mean, um, yeah, I, I, had a, I had a little message with Raddy and said, you know, I thought he, he played really well. And, and he said that, you know, they were gutted not to come away with at least a point from there, he, you know, especially with those chances. But, you know, they'll um, they'll focus on the next one. But as we said, it's a, it's a lot of football in, in, a, in a few days. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I think, uh, I, I think there were there were some positives. I think that I also think that this was this game could have gone. It could have gone either way. I mean, it, you know, if if Alo doesn't slip and just backs into the lad, he probably doesn't make the header as clean as he as he does when it's free. Uh, they they did make a they did make, Romania had a couple of chances. We had we had a couple of chances. The ref in the middle did not help us. So they, they actually the game management from Romania. They yeah. made that. They made it a nasty, nasty affair. Once they got their noses in front, that they were. That was it. That was it. Yeah. When they when they didn't have the ball, they were on the floor rolling around. And this uh, Lechner guy, the Austrian ref, he just bought every single, <laughs> every single bloody play that they had. And then when when we had the ball, it was rugby tackle. You know what I mean? It was yeah. just they they had like it, it was, they were sort of absolutely. Yeah, they were kicking guys when they were down. They were they were sort of leaving the boot in. They were. They were Roughhouse and all the rest of it. I think it was uh, um, it was a real nasty display from uh, from Romania. But I think the other side of it is, you know, if we nick one of those, if we nick one of those chances, one of the half chances or one of the goals, I think it's a different game. I think we calm down, we start building, you know, a bit of momentum, we start putting it, putting the ball to work, and we just we just couldn't catch the break. Well, you look at the stats for the game: sixty-one percent possession. Yeah. For Finland and uh, 89% passing accuracy. That they're kind of the stats that you expect to see from a victory, but uh, unfortunately, that's not to be. And with the other result in the game on Saturday night was um, Bosnia drawing at home to Montenegro, one-one. Mm-hmm. It leaves the group pretty tight halfway through. And at the time of recording is Monday. We're 24 hours before Finland play away to Bosnia again in Zenica and. We've got a few absences from the squad through injury. We've already talked about uh, O'Shaughnessy. Uh, Marcus Force withdrew last week after an injury. Uh, Lassie Lappin Island had COVID and withdrew. So, um, so again, you know, with the tired legs and the numbers have been reduced, uh, what are we looking to see, Mark? Do you think we'll see many changes for the final Nations League game? Who could we bring in? I mean, <laughs> I think, you know, I think, um, yeah, well, obviously we'll have to make changes at the back. You'd expect to see Luca come back in. I do think, unfortunately, it didn't work out, the partnership between Puki and, and Yolle. So I'd, I'd probably see Yolle going back to the bench. Shuler Kamara should probably start. Lerd will probably keep his place. Um, it'd be nice to see. I, th- I thought... Um, I mean, I looked at Soisalo when he came on down the right flank, and he's he's not a defender, but I didn't mind him going forward, and and he's at least got a good sort of size to him when he's back, and he seems to have the kind of engine that can uh, that can stay. So I think we'll we'll bring in maybe two or three players, um, and but I think obviously the style is going to be this the way it is. We're going to have a back three, we're going to have a wing backs in. Um, I, I I think it's going to be also it'll be another game of nip and tuck. You know, I think it'll be another one where it can go either way. If we if we have a good day, if it clicks for us, we'll win three one like we did last time. And if it's if it's disjointed like the Romania game, then then uh, we'll have to hold on to our seats. Okay, well, who would you uh, who do you think you'd like to see Rive give a go and try and get some valuable points? Oh, I'd 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 like to see Niskanen have a bit more of a bit more of a chance. I mean. Um... I think he came on. He's, he's he's played a few minutes over this over this campaign so far. But but yeah, I mean, we know about the sort of the wing back situation. We spoke about it. I mean, um, 
when we spoke to Rob Ivanov, he, he even sort of mentioned that, you know, the, that's that's the sort of area where, where we might sort of, you know, have to think about things. And yeah, I, I don't think, obviously Niskan, he's a winger, do you know what I mean? And he, he's, his strengths are going forward, but I don't think he's, I don't think he's terrible at defending either. Do you know what I mean? So I'd like to see him. Um, the boy Nisela as well, you know, he's he's got, as we said, you know, Robin Ludd, the, uh, however outstanding he is, he, he does he does look a bit he does look a bit tired. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. maybe give give Ludd the first half, see where you're at, and then you know Nisela's got it. He's got he's got the ability to unlock things. You know, so um, so yeah, they're they're two players who I'd look at. Mm-hmm. Well, so it'd be interesting to see with um, the, the final game. And then we've got two more games. We've got to home to Romania and away to Montenegro in September. Uh, it's not a huge amount of time, but yeah, the, the group is um, the group is pretty tight. And um, let's say after after three rounds of games, mm. we've got Bosnia Herzegovina on five points, Finland and Montenegro both on four, and Romania on three. So really, you've got again with with Montenegro playing Romania on Tuesday. Um, we could be going into the final two group games. Who knows? I mean, we we jested beforehand, you know, 12 points out of 12 would be ideal. Eight would be good. Eight would be very good. Uh, we're now at a point where seven's a maximum. But, um, yeah, I think every point matters at this stage. And, and as you've seen from some countries, promotion is the springboard. If look at Hungary. Yeah. And, I mean, Bosnia weren't, there were no great shakes in Helsinki. You know, I think, I think we, we took off too many good players for them to get that late minute equalizer. They were no great shades, even though they won they beat Romania. That was a tight one nil. And they didn't look that great against Montenegro either. So I mean I, I do think I do think this is a you know this isn't a this isn't a team we should be particularly scared of. You know, they've got Prevalik seems to be in decent form. Apart from that, there's not that many, you know, players that they can really hang their hat on to come through and give them a performance. So <sighs> I think, as as you said, Mark, the um, you know we don't need to be scared of Bosnia, but we we probably you know we don't we don't want to get scared of ourselves. The mentality thing starts to come into it. You know, you said about Yerry Urran in there, and um, I just want to make sure that the that the players are not too downbeat. I mean, you don't want to you don't in on a whole the the, the recent hooky project, if you want to call it, is is it's been going well. You don't want to chuck the baby out with a bathwater. You know what I mean? We've We've lost a game, so away to Romania. Do you know what I mean? So um, we don't want to get too doom and gloom. And yeah, I hope the boys can uh, can lift their heads and and put try and put in a performance in Zenica. Yeah, and then again, you know, we, we look at the previous stats, and the the two sides know each other quite well. Uh, they've played six times. They all seem to have been six times in the last week. And uh, <laughs> yeah. the head to head is Bosnia two wins, Finland two wins, two draws. Uh, both teams scored nine goals. So wow. Yeah, put your ass evenly on matched. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, that's we'll call we'll call that one a time for now. Uh, some of us will get back together again after the uh, the Bosnia game, and we'll have a bit of a chin wag about that, and then we'll get together a little bit further after that. We'll have a, a look at the Nations League campaign as a whole. Uh, there've been a lot of other goings on in Vakehouse Liga, Swarm and Cup, the courts, and all sorts. But um, yeah, I'll say, well, uh, fingers crossed, always saw me on for, for Tuesday night. And sure I'll up. just say thank you to Mark. Cheers. Thank you to Keke. Kiddos. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Finnish Football Show, Facebook, join the Facebook group, Facebook page for hot takes just like this. Steaming hot. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, we'll speak to you all soon. And uh, fingers crossed it'll be after a three-point win. Oi saw me on. You have been listening to the Finnish Football Show. You can find us online at finnishfootballshow.com. Remember to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening or watching. You can follow the Finnish Football Show page and group on Facebook and on Instagram. See the links in the episode description below. You can also connect with the four hosts on Twitter at Explore Finland, at FC Sormi, at Escape to Sormi, at Kekimulan. Links to the Finnish Football Show merch stores are also in the episode description.